What is God? What does that word mean to you? It makes no difference at all to me what that mean word means to you. But I think it should make a lot of difference to you what that word means. People have been trying to describe God ever since there were people. If you look at the order of service, the very last quote on the bottom page, very intelligent man wrote his definition. God is the word that mankind uses to identify the unseen complex complexity of power, energy, and intelligence that creates and manages the entire universe. Even back in the mythology days, there were gods. Human beings have always been aware that there is a, an unseen, and they have dis tried forever to describe it and explain it to people. And actually, I think they did a pretty good job. When you stop and think that 3,000 years ago, 99.8% of the entire population of the world was illiterate, couldn't read or write. And human beings weren't that far out of the cave at that point in time and hadn't developed their thinking processes the way we have today. They hadn't evolved. So trying to describe this unseen power, I think they did a pretty good job. People heard the story, and they were able to believe it. And then theologies kind of happened. And the theology is the study and love of God. Philosophy is the study and love of life. But most of the theologies, I haven't studied them all, but I've studied a lot of them, several of them. Most theologies that I've come up against and studied have two fundamental flaws, I think, just my opinion. One is they start with the concept that God created everything to be together in a harmony, a divine harmony. And then they separate people. Well, we're right and they're wrong. Ours is the right way of thinking, that's not. And the other flaw that I find most of the time is that the churches established under these theological doctrines and beliefs, the, I'll call it the hierarchy, the people at the top of these churches wind up trying to control people rather than having this God control the lives of people. You know, God has been described as this guy, this man, this father figure. In this place called heaven, 
And all of us have this idea about that. Two guys are standing at the pearly gates in St. Pete. All of us have that picture, every one of us. Where does that come from? I think that, look, did you all bring your Bible today? <laughs> I did. This book was given to me, it says right in the front, and somebody asked me if it was signed. Yes, it's signed. It was given to me September 30th, 1956. And as I begin to read it, the first couple pages I come to, this is a licensed transcript. It's the King James Version written in 1611. The level of thinking and discernment was at 1611. Queen Victoria licensed this to be reproduced for the, as the official Bible of England, July 11th, 1839. Queen Elizabeth, right here's the licensing agreement. Queen Elizabeth II reauthorized and relicensed this for publishing on November 9th in 1952 as the official Bible of England. I got this in North Canton, Ohio. <laughs> How did it get all the way from England? There's the new revised standard version. They changed the language to be easier to read, but they did not change the context or the content. This word of God, it's called, has been virtually the same since 1611. There was another Bible written in 342, but King James didn't like that, and he left 18 books out of it because they didn't coincide with his particular viewpoints. But I'm, I'm, I've wondered, I've always questioned the fact People call this the Word of God, and I have no doubt that the people who wrote these books, who wrote the wisdom, felt and believed they had had an, a mystical experience or an experience, a, a connection with God, and wrote that down to the best of their ability. I have no doubt about that, and there's some wonderful wisdom. But how can we, as human beings with our limited vocabulary, how can we possibly write the word of God? If you want to see or hear the word of God, you might try seeing a newborn as it leaves the birth canal. You might listen to that first whimper, that first breath of air. You might listen to the ocean waves. You might feel the breeze. We talk about the guy with three names, Ralph Waldo Emerson. It says, beauty is God's handwriting. At this very instant, on this world, there is a sunrise and a sunset. And in an instant from now, it will move and it will be different. And artists have been trying to capture that and recreate that forever. It can't be done. It changes every instant and it's always going on. And the forms, the colors, the shapes of the clouds, the reflections, are not able to be duplicated. And they have consistently been going on every single moment since there was sun and since the world started turning. 
That's the word of God. How do we describe that? How do we, how do we put that into rules and laws? I don't know. We can. We can look and see things that have worked well for humanity and people. We call them spiritual truths. Laws of nature. I wonder sometimes how humanity can try to live by a thought process that's 500 years old. How can we how can we do that in an age where we understand so much more about the unseen? Microwaves, internet, people have walked on the moon. How we have evolved, like it or not, resistant to change all we can, but we have evolved our ability to think and reason. Our awareness has been expanded, whether we've chosen to or not. We understand more about the unseen. Every day, one more little onion skin layer of mystery is solved. How do you define God? I challenge all of us to think about that. To consider that, to ponder that. We call it spirit. We call it the divine, the unseen. Makes no difference what you call it. Your awareness of what influence, what interaction, what part of your human experience can be and is controlled by this unseen power or energy or intelligence. In everybody in this room, there is a heart beating, there's hair growing, fingernails are growing, food is being digested. In every single one of us, that same unseen is working within every living thing on this planet, on maybe other planets. None of us are special. We're all life. We are all God. It's the energy, the intelligence, the, the harmony that lives, that is, in everything in this universe. The air, the land, the rivers, the bodies. Consider how much you have changed in the last five years of your life. Consider how your body has changed. Consider how your relationships have changed. Consider how your awareness has changed. Our universe evolves every nanosecond. Somewhere right now it's sunset, somewhere it's sunrise. And in just a moment, it'll be somewhere else. Concerning God, that is, God is whatever you choose.
whatever you feel, whatever you think, whatever your perception is. And I'm going to ask you to consider that whatever the rules might be, whatever the divine truths might be, the spiritual concepts, I think there is one truth that perhaps we can all agree on. And that's everything created in its form is created with a certain harmony. It seems like us humans are the only ones that mess that up, that create the chaos and the anxiety and the fear. So when you're thinking about God, how about if we have a one-word description of God, not spirit? How about harmony? I think that might be the key to realizing the magnificence of creation. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. God is whatever you feel God is in your heart. We're going to sing a song, Life is for Living. How much more pleasant the living of a life can be if we do it in harmony with our universe with each other. And so it is. Let's stand and sing life.